how would you explain the filmmakers or filmmaking in general in Louisville in just a few words? Passionate. The, the, the crew that is here is very passionate about what they do. My name is Archie Borders and I am a filmmaker living in Louisville, Kentucky. My name is Mike Fitzer. I'm a partner with 180 Degrees. We're a Louisville-based production company. My name is Matt Niehoff, and that's M-A-T-T-N-I-E-H-O-F-F, -F, and I am co-owner, director, and senior editor at Thoughtfly here in Louisville, Kentucky. The first film I made, Reception to Follow, I sold to Showtime, and that was the first film that made me go, oh, I'm a filmmaker. You know, to see your film on the Sundance Channel or at the theater for the first time was a big thing. The biggest flop I had was my second film, a movie called Paper Cut, where we had a budget of about a million and we had plenty of resources, but Archie Borders, the screenwriter, let down Archie Borders, the director, and the script wasn't as good as it should have been. You know, my third feature, Please to Meet Me, um, we got, you know, we got a great distribution deal, it's on Netflix, but the, the best thing was uh, we were able to premiere it uh, here in Louisville, and then we got this great review in, you know, the USA Today and Washington Post, and it was the first time... I'd made a film that kind of had succeeded and done everything you wanted. It was, you know, it got out there, got some critical acclaim, um, and it kind of atoned for the one that didn't do so good. And then the company is going great, too, so I'm happy about that. And your company is? 180 Degrees with Mike Fitzer and Aaron Arard. I've worked in, um, you know, all over the world, um, thankfully. You know, I've had that opportunity to do that. but. Um, I moved to Louisville about 21 years ago and um, decided to stay. I like the pace of life here. Um, you know, I moved from D.C. where um, it's, it's um, you know, a lot more hectic and, and um, I just like, I like, um, I like my life here, you know, and so um, I don't think I'd want to have a company anywhere else. Louisville as a city? Um, has its own particular personality. So in terms of equipment, things like that, we don't really have anything that anyone else doesn't have that makes films, but um, there is a, a, a big appreciation for the arts and for uh, individual storytelling. Uh, yeah, that's distinctive to this area, absolutely. I think that, you know, Kentucky may never be, um, it may never be a state where the new Avengers film is shot, you know, yeah. where, where we're going to see the next $100 million feature. But really, those aren't the films that drive a film economy. Um, you know, I have, I have tons of friends who, who work in the industry in L.A. or in New York, and, and for every $100 million feature that they work on as a crew member, they work on 10 to 15 500000 to a $1 million budget films in between that time so those are the films those are the the, the budget scale that um, really keep the film industry alive because those are the films that keep the payroll companies hopping and keep the, the catering companies hopping and and um, help pay into um, insurance plans and you know that sort of thing for crew members and for SAG members and you know it's just a it's it's really how the film industry works the film industry thrives off of lower budget films, not off the big box office films. From a creative standpoint, anytime you have a growth of arts in, in a city or in a, in a community, it creates jobs, it creates you know, aesthetics, it creates critical discussions, it creates artistic expression. Those are all great. Uh, from a business end, it creates a, a, a more to the tax base. Um, it, it makes a city wealthier, it makes a state wealthier. It, uh, it's great for tourism. It's great for um, you know just public relations. So I mean, there's there's really no downside to having movies shot in your state. Um, it creates culture and and uh, you know creates jobs. How did you first get interested in film? I first became. I've always been interested in film, but I first started thinking about film as a as a career when I failed organic chemistry and couldn't go to dental school. When I really got into it, I was in high school. And I remember <laughs> I was in a math class and we had to write a paper on a famous mathematician. And um, I asked the professor, because I was lazy, I said, hey, could I, could I make a video on this? And he was like, yeah, that'd be cool. Nobody's ever made a video on a math professor. Um, so me and my partner in the class, like we got our camera and we made 
a documentary sort of on Bertrand Russell, who is a famous mathematician. So in the video, myself and my partner made a time machine out of my 1993 Maxima. We, we went back in time, interviewed Bertrand Russell, then on the way back, the time machine leaked some fluid and caused a zombie outbreak in Louisville. And uh, so basically, it was about three minutes of history that back then we had to look up in an encyclopedia. And then the next eight minutes was like, terrible, terrible zombie movie. Uh, but that's how I got into it and like I got an A on the project and uh, the professor loved it and the class loved it and I got hooked on it from that. I'm, I'm a lot older than you guys so um, I saw the original Poseidon Adventure in 1972 and it was the most spectacular thing I'd ever seen in my life. You know? um, and uh, I thought wow whatever that is I want, want to do that and that, that's the beginnings and then after that then you start falling in love with movies in general and I grew up in Lexington. And there was a theater in Lexington called the Kentucky Theater. And they used to show repertory films. They would show Woody Allen, they would show Truffaut, they would show Robert Altman movies, Scorsese. And suddenly your world expands. You know, you're not just a kid living in the suburbs in, you know, Lexington. You're seeing the whole world through film. And that was the time where you saw a lot more independent films starting to emerge. So um, I was lucky. I worked on a film by a guy named John Sayles, who was one of the kind of the kings of independent film at that time. He had made, he had written low budget horror films and put all his money into making um, uh, inexpensive character based movies. And he made them in New Jersey and that was very inspiring. And then, so um, I decided to do the same and I was lucky I sold one of my first films to a guy who, a guy named John Pearson who was the producer's rep. Um, he, he also, Manage Rick Linklater's career and Kevin Smith and those guys and that was when I came up. So, my <laughs> Ruben, my first uh, film was sold uh, then to the Sundance Channel and the Sundance Film Festival and um, from there I produced other people's films and but I was able to stay in Kentucky. So, so that's Even what I'm better. still doing. I'm still doing that.